Hello from Heathcote Electronics. This video is about our CDU. You might find it useful to see some background information about how solenoid point motors work. We've put a link to this below. CDUs serve two purposes. The first is if you want to make a lot of points change with just one switch, so all the point motors are energized at the same time, you're going to need an awful lot of current. The 60 volt AC supply you normally use won't have enough current for this. The second reason to use a CDU is that it protects the point motors from burning out. The way it does this is that after it's sent its pulse of current to energize them, it will switch off the current until the switch has been opened. In other words, if the switch was to jam short or there was to be a short in the wires, then it would cut off the current and it would protect that would protect them from burning out. CDU stands for Capacitor Discharge Unit. These are the capacitors. They store the electrical charge. There are two capacitors on our extra power capacitor discharge unit. These two. They have a value of 4,700 microfarads. The higher that number is, the more electricity or electrical charge will be stored in them. I can explain how the capacitor discharge unit works with an analogy to water. Imagine you've got a water wheel. A very good water wheel. And you've got a stream, but it's the middle of the summer, so the stream's nearly dried up. And there's just not enough force in that water to turn the water wheel round. But if you built a dam with a sluice gate in it, and you were patient and waited till the dam filled up with water, and then you opened the sluice gate, then the water wheel would whiz round until the dam emptied of water. In CDU terms, the dam is just like the capacitor. And that's slowly being charged up with electricity from the power supply. The current coming out of the power supply, or let's say the electrons, they're coming out just like the stream. There's not enough to turn all the point motors at the same time. But if we're patient and we wait till this capacitor's full of electrons, and then we throw a switch, which is exactly the same as opening the sluice gate and this connects up to all the point motors all from the same switch so going to have a return wire going to the other side of the switch then the capacitor is going to do the same purpose as the dam full of water and it's going to let you switch four more point motors than the power supply could do without it. Just to complete the diagram so it makes sense, the common of the switch is actually there and then these two wires, all the red and green, are to use for the point motors. So the green goes to all these point motors. red to the other side of all the point motors and then we've got the common wire which I said on the other video has a link in it they all connect together and they all run to the other side of the capacitor just to show how to connect up the CDU here's the 24 volt 1 amp power supply we're going to use to power it I'll connect this up first and then show you what happens. There are four terminals on the CDU. Two are labelled in plus, in minus, two are labelled out plus, out minus. So this is a positive from the 24 volt power supply. If you're using AC you don't need to worry which way around the wires go. It, it doesn't matter with AC. If you're using DC then they've got to go the right way around. It's always safest to wire things up with the power disconnected. So now we're going to plug in the power 
Now on this CDU, there's an LED to show when it's charged up. So after I've plugged the power in, you should see the LED light. The LED is lit. That shows that it's the two capacitors are charged up. These two terminals are the output terminals. If we short across those with a wire, we should see a little flash. That just shows you how much power is coming out from the point motors. There you see, it's charged up again. We'll do that again. Right, the LED is discharged now. And this is shorted out, and that stops the LED charging up. And this is a thing that protects your point motors from burning out. This is a setup from the previous video, I explained it about solenoid point motors. What I'm going to do now is just connect the output of the CDU into these two terminals. Originally these two wires went directly into those terminals. After I've connected it up we can just see the point motors changing. Just to explain the wiring, here's the two wires into the in plus and in minus from the 24 volt DC power supply. Then we've got a wire coming out from the out minus terminal, that's a black wire, and that goes along to the common that links the two coils together. We've got the out plus that runs along to the middle terminal on this switch. And when you operate the switch, that's going to connect that way to the red wire, that way to the green wire. The red and green wire go to the other ends of the two coils. To show you how it's all wired together in a diagram, here we've got the 24 volt DC power supply. We've got two wires from there going to the CDU. Positive wire going into in plus, the negative wire going into in minus. Out of the CDU, we've got out minus and out plus. The out plus should use brown for this. The out plus goes to the middle terminal on the switch. Here we've got the point motors. I'll draw a number of point motors. In actual fact, I did some tests and with 16 volts AC and extra power CDU, you can easily move six point motors all at the same time with the same switch. Anyway, that minus goes to all the links that link the two coils together. Now I've got the two terminals on the switch. The red goes to one end of every coil. And the green goes to the other end of every other coil. If you wanted one of the points to move the other way from the others, you could swap the red and green over. Just to make it clearer, there's the coils inside all the point motors. Now there's only one other thing to say that if you want to move a lot of point motors all at the same time with one switch, then you must have reasonably thick wire because all the electrons have got to get along that wire. 
and the other thing is the point motors mustn't be stiff and I did find with a seat point motor that not to screw it up really tightly but to back off the screws a little bit so it's a tiny bit wobbly and it's a lot less stiff that way the next video we're going to make is to show how our, our point indicator board works the reason for the point indicator board is because these were spring loaded switches and they always return to the middle so we cannot look at the switch and see which way the points are set 